So tonight I thought we would go over a viewer submission. It's been a while since uh, we had a look at one of the games that you guys have submitted. And uh, you can still send them to me. Just go to info at stlouischessclub.org and uh, send a, a game with a little description, perhaps your name. Um, and who knows, could end up on YouTube. Um, it was a particularly beautiful game, so when I saw it, I just felt like, okay, I gotta, gotta show this game. And it actually reminded me of a famous game. So we're gonna first take a look at a famous game, and we'll see how um, the, the amateur compared to the game that was uh, you know, a really remarkable, immortal game. And the theme for tonight is going to be Zugzwang, which is, um, of course, when your opponent is like obliged to move, or you or your opponent is obliged to move, but you really don't want to, because any move will make your position worse. Um, so usually in chess, you want to move because you can improve your position. But there are rare cases, they're a lot more common in King and Pawn endgames. You know, it's a particular theme that recurs quite a lot. But it's not every day that you see it with lots of pieces on the board, and somebody is just stuck for a move. They just, any move they make, their position will deteriorate. So it's really rare that it happens with lots of pieces on the board, but uh, somebody sent in such a game. And we're first going to jump over here to the board and have a look at a, a very famous game in which Zug Zwang was employed with lots and lots of pieces on the board. This is the game between Samish and Nimzovic um, from 1923 in Copenhagen. And it's often referred to as the Immortal Zugzwang game. So we'll see it. Um, and we'll kind of hurry through it. We'll flip it around because it's, it's Nimzovic is black. So um, we're going to kind of go through this because we're going to focus on the, the other gentleman's game. And we'll read what he has to say when we, when we get to it. Um, so knight f3. So he's not allowing the Nimzo Indian with bishop to b4 because he's playing Nimzovic. And, you know, you don't want to play Nimzo Indian against Nimzovic. So instead, we got a uh, Queen's Indian, and the Fianchetto variation, this is all pretty typical, and, um, okay, both sides castle. And the main move here today is knight to e4, but we're not going to worry so much about the theory. Um, d5, also very solid move, um, and, uh, okay, maybe we're thinking about taking here, uh, but white goes here. So now this would be a blunder because of the diagonal here. So he's preventing that, and black just plays another really solid move. And he, white has the, the typical very small advantage that he gets in the Queen's Indian. And here, white actually made the first positional mistake of the game. And white sort of played this game listlessly. He didn't really play with purpose. Um, he just sort of did nothing, which sometimes works out. Sometimes the best thing to do is not do anything at all. Uh, and it's hard to know when to do that. But you'll notice he, he doesn't play very energetically. And he actually makes a mistake right here. He takes on d5. Um, the tension in this position actually really favors white. Black is never really threatening to take here. Not only do I have that protected, but also if you, if you ever take, I mean, you're going to get some pressure here on c6. So it's positionally undesirable for black to take. And white can take at any moment he chooses. But choosing to do so immediately is a mistake. And it lets black get a very solid position. He just takes back with a c pawn. And now this bishop that was sort of stuck defending sort of an awkward pawn. Uh, in the future, he might be able to go to a better diagonal. and. He might also be able to do the plan that he went through in the game. Um, but we'll have a look. We'll give White a move here. And his plan here was actually quite interesting. Uh, so it's not super obvious how Black should proceed in this position. But his idea was to gain more space on the Queen side. So he's going to play a6, b5. And in some fashion, he's going to try to maneuver a knight to the c4 square. This is his, his middle game plan. Okay, so he played a6. Uh, he played b5. Uh, queen b3 is... Okay, yeah. White plays a lot of eh moves. Um, that's sort of his thing. So black is going to try to put his knight here on c4. 
the pond structure really tells you kind of where you want all of your pieces. And there's two routes to get there. So you might imagine D7 to B6 to C4, very possible. In the game, he chose C6, which not only gains a tempo on the D pawn, but if, okay, you just defend your pawn, I'm going to A5 with tempo, and then I'm jumping into C4. And okay, that's just a good strategic repositioning of my piece. Um, okay, so he gained the tempo and white decided to trade the knights. He didn't like the idea of the knight going to c4, and we reached this position. So there's some funny business that could happen on this, this file. You know, you might imagine there, there's some funny moves that, that you can try, but, you know, okay, we're just going to protect our guy. Um, so it's no big deal. Um, so he decides instead to play h3, so not doing a whole lot. Uh, now, I, I quite like the move that Black played here. I think it's, it's very good. So we'll, we'll pause for a second now. Um, so what Black wants to do is he, he wants to play this move b4. If he does it right away, though, the knight is going to jump to a4, and then he's going to jump into c5. So how did Black prevent this idea? I want to play b4, but I don't want you to be able to play knight a4. So how did he stop him? Yeah, I got an idea. How about uh, queen d7? Queen d7, excellent. And that's exactly what he played. So yeah, now we're, our idea is we're going to play b4, and you won't have this option. So excellent. All right, and so white decided king h2. So. He's sort of stuck for a plan. He doesn't really have any real ambition here. He, I guess he can't figure out exactly what to do. It's, it's not so easy. And Black does have some plans to improve his position. You can imagine we played before. Our bishop gets to come to a nice square. And this bishop that you know is really sort of an awkward piece in a lot of lines, if it does find itself on this diagonal, it might actually turn out to be a really strong piece. Okay. And so before he goes on with his plan of b4, which perfectly valid move here, he decides, well, not only do I want to win on the queen side, I want to win on the king side as well. So he plays the move knight h5. All right, just threatening to take the bishop, achieve the bishop pair. So the bishop dropped back. And now this move f5. All right, so he gets sort of a stonewall structure. He's gaining lots more space. He's still going to play b4. Um, things are looking good. So you'll notice black is just improving his position. White hasn't been doing anything. So it'll be, be interesting. Well, what, what's going to happen here? Well, now white decided to play the move queen to d1. So he's lining up the queen with the knight. Um, so you can imagine we might play e3, but we might also be considering just playing e4. And, you know, that might help us gain a tempo on the knight. So that's his plan. Uh, so black has to take that pretty seriously. But he has time to play b4. And you'll notice that knight doesn't have a lot of places to go. So the knight went back, um, the only safe square. And again, we can prevent the, the e4 idea for just a moment. Bishop to b5. White wants to renew the idea, so he moved his rook out of the way. And you might be thinking simply, okay, you play knight f6 or something. Uh, but black actually played a really, really cunning move. And uh, I guess you, you can pause if you want to try to play like uh, Nimzovich here. But it's... Um, it's difficult to appreciate until you see a little bit deeper just how powerful this move actually is. It, it looks kind of like a blunder. Bishop d6, just ignoring the e4 idea. So why, why is this so good? I mean, e4 and, all right, has, has black just committed a huge blunder? Um, I mean, now, okay, even if, well, first of all, you're, you're threatening to win this. But also, even if I drop back while well, I'm getting forked, 
So how did Black get himself out of this bind? What was his idea here? Let's see if, if we can find a good move. Pawn to g6, you mean? Pawn to g6. Um, okay, so I can either take on d5. Um, I mean, also, I can just play move like this, too. Um, yes, yeah, so you could play this way, and, I, and I, you know, I don't think... Maybe it's not all that special, but maybe I don't want to weaken all these squares in front of my king. You know, I immediately... I'm sort of giving you, you access into my camp a little bit. Uh, it, should, it could be playable, um, but he didn't want to weaken his, his king side, so okay, but that was, that's a very good idea. Certainly a safe way to play. What's the ambitious move, though? Queen f7. Queen f7. All right, so everybody wants to defend their stuff. Um, I think, again, I can just play, like, e5, gain some space. Um, okay, I don't know that you have a, a whole lot here, you know. So this, this is probably okay as well, but he really had a very, very ambitious sacrifice here. Um... So he went for the move, f takes e4. All right, what's the idea? All right, I take your knight, thank you. And then what did black play? This hopefully is an easy one. Yeah. Rook takes f2, Rook takes f2. exactly. And okay, let's, let's look at this for a second. He gave up a piece. Um, what's his compensation? He has two pawns. That's very good. And you'll, you'll start to notice uh, white does have certain issues. It is particularly difficult to play the white position here. The extra piece you have is this knight that, at least at the moment, can't move anywhere. Not even there. Um, so the knight is stuck. He can't move anywhere. Uh, this, this rook, very active piece. All right, I mean, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to develop. All of my pieces are going to come to very good squares. Um, and, okay, how do, you, how do you really play this as white? So he was thinking, well, first of all, I want to get out of this pin. The pin is sort of a nuisance. Uh, if you just drop back right away, though, you're dropping your G pawn. So he proceeded to first defend his pawn. His next move is going to be king h1, getting out of the pin. Black just calmly doubled up, and as stated, king to h1. And uh, you might be surprised to find that white is actually completely losing here. So in this position, he just simply brought the rook up to f5. After he dropped the queen back, another very powerful move was played here. Um, what is it? So rook e2 is a very tempting move, isn't it? Um, and so if you play here, I mean, I have to move my queen, so I, I move out of the way. And so this is definitely a part of it, and this, I mean, this must be great for black. You know, I, I don't know, I can even play bishop a5, but I might, I might just double, who knows. Um, so this is definitely a part of, of the idea. We want to threaten this, but we don't want the queen to be able to run away. So what move did black play? To really contain the queen. So let's, yeah, let's see if we can find a very strong move here. Yeah? Bishop c4. Okay, so... I don't know, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not going to get trapped. So I have to avoid getting trapped. Um, Bishop d3. Yeah, so this is what was played. Um, yeah, so now where's the queen going to go? I'm simply now threatening rook e2, trapping the queen, winning the game. So white defended. And now, remarkably, one more move was played and white resigned. And, okay, there's more than one move that wins here. But if you remember the theme of... Zugzwang, you'll notice it's very difficult for white to move here. So uh, a very calm move was played. h6, 
and okay, wait, it's your turn. And it's it's quite remarkable. He absolutely doesn't have a move that doesn't just immediately lose. So he gave it up here. Uh, obviously, we're having difficulty getting our knight out. You know, we can't even drop the, the bishop back because... Uh, oh, the thing isn't on. Because you take here. Um, you know, okay, we can't move the rook away because then rookie two. And we can't make a move like this because of the bishop. Um, okay, what about this move, though? Well, okay, I mean, okay, we can't move this bishop really either. So many reasons. You can just take. Um, I guess one move to consider is what happens on king h2. What would, how, does, how does black just win here? Okay, you want to move this one? That's, that's a good one to move. Um, and it's not much of a sacrifice, because this guy's pinned, and uh, you can take one of these things, but your queen is trapped. And yeah, so the bishop's pinned, so you can't even take that way, so this just wins. Uh, pawn moves don't do anything. Um, even if you play a move like this, I mean, I can just keep the position the same. All right, your, your turn again. So remarkably, there's just, there's just nothing here. Okay, I mean, if something like this... All right, we, we can just keep going on. There's just nothing to do. So he gave it up. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this game really quick so that we could appreciate this game that the, the viewers submitted. Uh, we will go ahead and jump to that now. And, okay, let's put the first move on the board. So this is the reason that I wanted to show you guys that game, so we can see the similarities. And this game will be a little bit more thorough with. So there was a gentleman named Philip Bloom who sent in this game. And what also was funny is I was just looking at a bunch of games last night to try to pick. I, I thought I'd, oh, I'll do a viewer one. And uh, Ken West was there, and he, he just started telling me the story about what happened. He just played a tournament in Indianapolis. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, there's this guy named Bloom. And I sat down next to him, and he said, hey, are you the real Ken West? Uh, and he's like, yeah, that's me. And then somebody next to him was like, oh, you're Ken West? <laughs> so, yeah, so he's really famous, uh, but nobody, nobody knows what he looks like. you got to come to the club to, to really see him. Maybe we'll get him on the show one day. But he works Tuesday nights. That's the problem. Um, and so then, you know, so he said, yeah, this guy, Bloom, so I'm like, was it Philip Bloom? And then I had it here, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's the guy. He showed me this game. So, all right. For, <laughs> it's, it's a really, really pretty game, really beautiful. Um, uh, so I think Ken West was able to beat this guy, so I don't know his rating, but it's, he must be around Ken West rating. Um, and this guy has sort of the opposite problem of the, the game we saw last week. Last week we saw a guy that can play the opening like a genius, and then you just blow it in the end game. Um, tonight, we're going to see exactly the opposite. Players didn't really play optimal. I mean, okay, they're not, they're not grandmasters, so that's excusable. They didn't play optimally and find all the correct ways to punish black immediately. But, uh, okay, the end is just so pretty that we, we really must take a look at it. And we'll read what this gentleman said about the game. He said, this isn't the strongest game you've ever seen, but it ended with a pretty remarkable Zugzlong situation with a remarkable number of amusing situations in between. I don't know if you've ever seen such a Zugzwang with so many pieces on the board. I played white, um, correspondence game against no name, and you know we know how well no name scores, so it doesn't look good for him, so I don't know who, he's, who his opponent is or what the rating is. Um, had time to discover some crazy continuations, um, and he goes on a little bit. Okay, so it starts as an English. We'll just jump through the opening here, though. It quickly transposes to a King's Indian. And we have this sort of trendy move, h3. Um, it's becoming sort of a, a popular move. And um, so one of the ideas, well, uh, we do want to sometimes put our bishop on e3, so we're stopping any, any knight stuff. And sometimes we might be a little ambitious, and if black castles kingside, perhaps we'll develop, go the other way, and maybe we'll actually end up attacking black which is sort of unusual in, in most King's Indians. So it's either, is it a high-class waiting move, or is it just a waste of a turn? That's sort of the, uh, the debate, but some pretty decent people have been playing it lately, so can't be so bad. 
uh, H5, a novelty. So this move is not good for lots of reasons. Um, well, I mean, first of all, it just, it's just weakening the king side. So perhaps I've been trying to figure out why black played this, this move, so it's, it's never been played before. There's probably a reason. Um, if black ever wants to castle now, he does have to consider that white will play a move like g4 and try to open things up, which, um, which makes it all really hard for black to castle. So already, you know, I guess h3, black probably had never seen this, didn't know what was going on. So it has, has good surprise value. Um, and so we'll, we'll see what happens. So he just develops. And after a few more developing moves here, black makes a tremendous blunder that goes unpunished. B6. And surprisingly, this is already lost. <laughs> um, well, you can already punish black. Black is making, you know, lots of moves on the sides of the board. Uh, he's, he's not too concerned with, with castling. Uh, so this is, this is kind of tricky, though, if, you've, if you haven't seen these types of positions before. So I will give the audience a chance here. You can pause at home. Uh, how could white have just won the game outright? And to give a small hint, in these types of positions, well, normally the, the pawn is back here on h7. But what black is doing is, you know, they're castling, and they're playing either e5 or c5 in this position. You need to take some control of the center uh, if you're going to play this way. So by avoiding central play for a little bit too long, uh, he's already in trouble here if white plays correctly. So hopefully that was a, a big enough hint. Yeah. E5. E5. Uh, so this is the winning move. So it doesn't matter if you take on e5 or not after some recapture. All right, we have to drop back. Let's go to h7 so we can still castle. How do we continue this, this attack here already? E6. E6, yes, the sacrifice. E6, uh, a very powerful move. The idea is to undermine the king side. So if you take, for example, um, these weaknesses are very bad news for black. So either queen c2 or, or bishop to d3 are both very good moves, and it doesn't matter how black attempts to hold on to it. Um, you can put one of your, your knights here. I'm, we're going to pile up on it, and it doesn't matter how you choose to do this. Um, probably I castle queen side, but something like this is actually really really bad for black. Uh -huh. This, yeah, it's just not, you're not going to last very long. Um, yeah, h5, yeah. I mean, yeah, here's a little bit better, even if we can take our knight. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that wasn't, that wasn't played, so he didn't miss a chance. And this actually is something that happens in the, the King's Indian. So when you're playing the King's Indian and black doesn't attempt to make any stake to the center, you do want to be looking for a move like e5 just to immediately punish them and, and wipe them off the board. All right, but that wasn't played. Uh, instead, this move d5, which all right, is, is probably not the best move. And I think, too, white, maybe he was thinking, well, normally they attack the center and then I play d5. But even though black hadn't struck yet, he's like, oh, I'll play d5 anyway. But really... This also does give black some additional squares that he might be able to use. Um, so not, not quite the, the correct move, move but all right. Uh, yeah, now black does some really funny maneuver. You, you're, you're gonna like this, this maneuver. Now, I was trying to think, why did black retreat his knight? Because it just looks incredibly wrong. And the only thing I can think of is he's going to try to damage white's pawn structure. And, you know, computers are like, yeah, that's fine. Just, just do it. But, I mean, it's, it doesn't... Oh, no, we're going to die. Uh-oh. Yeah. All right. Um, so I assumed even if you make a normal move, so this wasn't played in the game, though. The movie played in the game was really strong. Uh, you know, okay. So you can do this. It doesn't seem like the human move, but the computer's like, yeah, fine, and all... I'll defend somehow is black here. Uh, 
but you know giving away the dark squares is really scary because you know I'm coming in and coming in um, so that's what I thought maybe that's that's the only way I can understand a move like this but uh, Knight d4 was played this is a very strong move and it has a very serious threat because we know about smothered mate but there's also the smothered queen um, so we're just threatening to win the queen on the spot and that does sort of force black to play an awkward move that he doesn't really want to play so in the game he played bishop to b7 the idea being you're just guarding the c6 square but unfortunately this is just a very very bad square for the bishop i mean because you're looking at a wall that you're never going to break through so that's always going to be a bad piece and if you play the king's indian a lot normally what happens is you wait for white to castle and then somehow you take on h3 and you sacrifice everything and you checkmate your opponent that's what black likes to do so in a lot of lines in the king's indian White is even willing to sacrifice a pawn for positional compensation just to get this guy off the board. Um, it's a very common theme because this bishop wall, okay, it doesn't look like he's doing too much. Let's we'll imagine the pawn structure was, was fixed for a second. Fix all our pawns. Um, this would be a, a typical thing. You just wait and wait, and hopefully they play to h3, so maybe one day we'll sack and we'll, we'll take it. Well, you're not going to do that if you're not on that diagonal. Um, and unfortunately, our protagonist will in the the near future go ahead and go here and let black get rid of this this piece so um queen d2 uh okay normal and you might think people are going to castle but people are never going to castle aha so i guess he's like that this maneuver was a failure he just jumps back so obviously white has been outplaying his opponent um but we're going to see black is going to be a sort of a resourceful guy, and things are, are about to change. So here white should just play like bishop e2 and maybe pick a side to castle. Um, he plays b4, which uh, is probably not the correct plan at this moment. Uh, it's typical that this is the idea. You aim for a move like c5 or something in this, this type of structure. But it also gives black... The option of playing a move like a5 which causes some issues for white because if you're forced to lock down the queen side this is exactly what black is hoping to do he hopes you lock down the queen side because that's usually where you have more more counterplay because you have more space on the queen side so now you'll never open anything up uh, over there so this actually would be quite the accomplishment for black and then black can decide where to put the king uh your castle and queen side is now sort of an idea but this actually would be a really good move for black but black didn't play a5 he went one square too short all right i mean so not the best play but but the end of the game that's what it's that's what we're aiming for and uh here yeah he decided to jump in um so this was a mistake you're giving away a great central piece for i mean arguably black's worst piece in the position so black happily took and he moved his knight out of the way, attacked the pawn. Um, and we're about to see black, a, a common theme in this game is he sort of gets him into positional trouble. He gets himself into some tricky situations. Uh, you know, this, this looks quite good for white. But black is quite a crafty fella. He found a lot of tactical ways to get himself out of positional jams. And we're going to see that very soon. So he played b5. Very sensible. Protect your pawn. He took, opened up the rook. Very good. And, okay, can you find the move that black played in this position? So black's, you know, just been sort of outplayed. And he's going to look for a way to really cause some problems for his opponent. You know, really mix up the game. Uh, really, you know, he's going to try to drastically change the nature of the game to try to get himself back into the, the swing of things. So... It may or may not have been objectively the best move here, but it's a very good practical decision uh, was played here by Black. So can you see the, the combination that Black decided to go for in this game? It's really nice. This was a correspondence game, so they 
presumably had more time than the, the class to think about this position. Um, does anyone have any ideas, though? We do still have this really strong bishop, so we are trying to set up some tactics on this diagonal. That's the, the big hint. Yeah. Knight c4. Knight c4? Okay, I will take it. Knight e4, right? So this obviously is the, the very tempting move to make. It, uh, it doesn't quite work, though, because I take Check. here. Yeah. Um, I think the move here was bishop to c4. And uh, so this actually looks kind of promising, and this is sort of, this is sort of the idea. It doesn't quite work here. Um, so well, this does look quite good for black, but we'll compare it to... Really messy. It is, yeah, so even if it's not quite right, it still, <laughs> still might work even in a correspondence game. But in the game he actually played, uh, he has the same idea, but first he inserted this move, knight to c6, uh, which so it's a, it's a similar sort of scenario. Um, it does sort of get rid of a weakness for him. You, know, you just fill in, fill that guy in. Um, the other version might also just equally be good, but this, the engine said, yeah, do it this way or, or not do it, and it said don't take on e4 right away. So, um, but yeah, it's very similar. So the idea, of course, knight takes e4. Yeah, so he sacks one knight, then he sacks another, and then he's going to pick up your rook. Um, your queen and knight are attacked, so you're forced to accept this and give up the rook this way. Um, which is, okay, which may or may not be exactly the best for black, but he really has gotten himself out of a predicament. He really was sort of outplayed, and now we got this very strange imbalance where it's two pieces for an exchange, and it's some pawns. Um, it's just very, very messy. And so when you're worse, you really want to mix up the position like this, because now white has to really go back to the drawing board and figure out what he's going to do here. And having the pawns, there's nice central pawns for black. That's a nice little plus. Um, keeps them nice and safe. And here white played another very good move. Bishop c4. And black played a very understandable move. But it wasn't correct. I think he played a move that's very tempting. White is about to castle. Then you'll be attacking our, our bishop on a1. So black simply retreated. And again, white now has a concrete way to just end the game. And again, it, it wasn't spotted by our protagonist. Um, it's something that may come to your mind, and it's sort of, you know, maybe black is about to castle. Maybe he's just going to play a move like e6 and be really solid. Um, but white does have a chance here to strike before black can do any defensive move. So really, he should have... Defended against this threat first before retreating the bishop to g7. Knight g5. So this is obviously a, a very tempting idea. We want to double attack. Um, I will play e6. I suppose I can castle. I'll play e6. And then I'll go like this and hope you don't have any sacrifices. <laughs> so this actually isn't it, but it's, it's definitely a part of the idea. We do have this idea of, of taking on f7. Now, if you've been playing as much Bug House as I have today, this move would be really, really obvious. <laughs> so if you were playing Bug House, you wouldn't even think. You, you wouldn't even calculate anything. You'd just, just play this in a, in a heartbeat. Um, so it's, yeah, the, the, yeah the, the laughter makes me think some people have figured it out. Um, oh, so he did do this. The main, uh, that's the move that he actually played in the game. You take on f7, and this ends the game. Now, this is something you may want to consider when you're playing this. The obvious idea is we're playing knight to g5. But, okay, it is a correspondence game, so maybe you actually can look at every variation here. And it's, okay, some of them are a little bit more difficult to figure out than others, so I don't know if he, he actually took a look at this. 
it's a movie you want to see, but you, you know, you're given a piece away, so you better make sure you're checkmating in every line here. Um, so let's look at a couple king retreats. And uh, let's see. Okay, so this one is, is obviously bad news due to this fork. But uh, what about this move? What would we play now? There's a, a mating attack. This is, yeah, just drawing the line up. Just go up. Um, and yeah, you can give your stuff away, but this is it's not going to end right for you. Um, a little bit more testing and difficult is this move. And uh, what I really like, too, is the objectively best move. Is a really, really surprising move. Um, there is, like, everything wins, though, as long as you are getting your queen on the right diagonal. Um, what's funny is the best move is, is actually either c2 or, or d3 for the queen, and that's really annoying. And defending it doesn't help you very much, just 96, and it's over. Um, <laughs> so, so that's very good, just, just for a laugh. Maybe we'll come up. Um, and here, too, it's also... It's very tempting, so you might want to pause at home. This is, it's very hard to play the objectively best move here, because it's mate in three. And I think there's so many checks and moves that are very, very tempting. Um, the only reason to show this is because the, the best move is funny, so I'll just, I'll just give it away. Queen d5. So sort of a silent queen move that, you know, threatens all sorts of mates and mates. and Okay, you, just, you can't stop them all. You can... You try to stop one, but then, all right, and then I have another. Um, I guess you can try to go here. Then I have to find the cutest mate. It's, it's, it's difficult. Maybe. Um, yeah, I assume this, this has to be mate too. But mine was prettier. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the only decision you have to make is yeah, what's the prettiest way to mate you from this position? Uh, it's tough. There's probably a lot of mate and twos. <laughs> um, Okay, so again, I mean, it's understandable that perhaps it was, it was difficult to calculate some of those variations. Um, but it is the sort of thing you want to look for. You're way ahead in development. The king still isn't safe. Black has to do something about the safety of his king pretty soon. And, okay, so this is, again, your chance to strike while you possibly can. But in the game, knight g5, which, you know, is, is very reasonable in its own right. All right, so he defended. And again, I go, and I hope you don't have any sacrifices. Um, White Castle. Okay, very reasonable. And now, d5. Also, what's funny is if, if you look up here when he castled, it was move 20, so it says 0, 0, 0. So you want to wait till move 10 or 20 to castle kingside, because your opponent might think that you castled queenside. Because it's zero, 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 and then you're, he's so confused, he thinks your king's way over there. Uh, that's, that's good strategy. Um, okay, so move 20, we, we finally see somebody castle. Um, D5, which is fine. Um, perhaps he's going to, in the future, think about trying to target this pawn. Okay, sensible enough. Uh, queen E7. And here I actually, I liked what white decided to do, although I thought he was going to do it for a slightly different reason. He played the move knight f3. Um, and you might, you know, the knight was seeming like he's, he was doing pretty good on g5, you know, but there's never going to be any sacrifices now. Black's really defended quite well. And I assumed that White's point was he was going to try to control the e5 square. Um, so he was, I thought he was going to play bishop f4, maybe rook e1, um, and either put a bishop here or a knight here. Try to, you know, get the dark squared bishops off the board, and hopefully we get an attack on the king. But we do have to be careful as white, because black is also going to castle, and then he's going to use his rooks on this file. Um, so that sort of thing. Black has his chances here, too. So this move, for some reason, I guess he was, he was afraid of, of bishop to g5. Um, he didn't have to be. But, but white had a different plan with his knight. Uh, after rookie one, uh, he is pretending to have a threat here, but there's no threat. And so here, black overreacts to white's threat. 
Now, white just put a rook on the same file as a queen and a king. So it looks like there's going to be some sort of sacrificing, and then I take your queen somehow. That's what it looks like, but it's not actually true. Because if we just waste a move here for a second, and then we think we're brilliant, because if you take, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. The joke's on you, because now I play rook d8. And this pin is annoying. Um... So this, it's not a real threat. So black really doesn't want to overreact like this um, in this position. So he perceives a possible threat, but you want to make sure you're seeing, is that actually truly a threat or do I have some counter defense? Because um, in the game, he played rook to d8, preventing white from blundering. So now white's not going to go through with that sacrifice that you might otherwise have gone for. And more than that, you're also taking... A rook it was very good. This is a, a very decent file for the rook. Half open file. Are you going to come in this time? No? You're just going to chill there? All right. Um, so he can use that, and he could double his rooks. He could try to get them active and into the game later on. But now the rook is on a worse square, so that's not going to happen. And this was White's idea. He is going to put his knight on b5. Okay, it keeps a lot of pressure on black's position. Is it... Is it his time already? No, we got eight minutes. Um, so after knight to b5. Rook e8, which is not going to be the best move. Because um, now what white does is he really goes after the c pawn. And we're going to see why this isn't a very good square for this rook in just a moment. Now once again, black has sort of gotten himself into a bad way positionally. You know, he, he again, you know, he sort of, he messed up the board. He made it really difficult. You know, White didn't play super accurately and, and punish him as directly as he could have. And now he's gotten himself into positional trouble again because probably he should just end up playing a, a passive move like Rook to C8. But again, he's a very, very cunning guy. So he went for a crazy confusing, um, which again, sort of helps him out in a way. And again, it's not objectively... Perfect, but the element of surprise is, is really Black's forte here. Queen b5. So just giving up on the c7 pawn. So Black says, all right. Or White says, I'll take it. And now, oh, what was Black's point? There's only one move here. So you have to play accurately here. Which... It's, it's funny. So, so when the game got really technical, both of these players played really well. Uh, so the must move here. Bishop c3. And again, you know, it's, he's messing up the board. It's starting to get complicated. I take your rook. I'm on f2, so you don't have time to win the exchange on e8 because I'm doing stuff to you on f2 that you're not going to like. Um, so he took the bishop. And the rook has time now to retreat. So uh, we saw him at the beginning do this knight maneuver. Now he did this rook maneuver. Um, but again, the board is so messy that it's, it's becoming really difficult. However, this move, and from now on, white is just going to play fantastic chess here. So, which is funny. When it Positionally, they didn't play so well, but then when it gets really technical, uh, they both played fantastic. So this next move by White, a really, really excellent move. Um, so I'll give the audience a chance to play the best move here, because yeah, all of White's moves now are, are just great. You do have a way of going after this king. I mean, he did this to himself early on, Now there's, and then he... Got rid of the dark squared bishop, so let's make as many dark squares red as we can. Uh, bishop h6, this is a very tempting move, I think. Um, but, okay, if I remember right, I play here. And then if you take, I take back. Um, and this should be okay for you, too. But I'm, even though I, you know, again, I'm, I lost a little bit of material there, I'm trying to get rid of your dark squared bishop, because that's a really powerful piece in this position. So you do want to kind of find a way to keep him on the board if you're going to really try to punish black here. And white did find a good way to do it. 
He started with the move. Queen to e5. And it may look like I'm trying to do this, but I also have the very powerful idea of going to f6 and putting my bishop on e5, which is very difficult for black. Um, so here, you know, king h7. And again, white did find a very powerful move. Uh, the queen went to f6. And uh, you know, I'm just going to... I'm going to go here. You're not going to like it. Um, so black took here. And again, here is a moment that... All right, if you're a super tactician, maybe you can play this move. Um, there's really a, an awesome move that white could play here. Now, in the game, white played the obvious move. He put his bishop on e5. So we'll come back to this in just a second and... All right, it's it's a supercomputer move that will will show off. So he went here, and now you have this threat. You can't really move your rook here because I'm taking this. So the only way for black to defend is to check and then park the queen on h6. So this is what happened in the game. And, all right, this is very good for white, as we'll see. However... For super accuracy, you could have played the move g4. Um, so this is the, the super pro move. The idea is after any move, um, now we play bishop e5. And the idea is after this, I can't, okay. g5. Um, <laughs> so that would have been the absolute most clinical way for white to play, but uh, okay, I mean, that's... Fair enough to miss that one. Uh, so, okay, so this is what happened. He checked. Went to h6. So I, I'm not mated yet. And, again, super powerful move from white. So this is really awesome move. Um, for the class, you got like 10 seconds. But at home, as much time as you want. Uh, what did white play in this position? So in the game, he sacrificed on e6. So let's see, what's the point of this? I take your knight. Now, be careful here as white. First time, um, I guess we'll just, we'll go through it. He went to e7. The point being that now when you go back, I can take this pawn with check. He went back. And... Okay, so this, you also should be really proud of the next couple of moves here. The game lasts about two more moves here. Uh, and Okay, so this, this is really fantastic. Um, now, if you think about what black wants to do, um, you realize he doesn't have all that many options. But, eh, I guess to give it away... If it's Black's turn, and we saw in that other Immortal game where you really uh, constricted all of the pieces and it was the queen that was trying to slide around and escape, in this position, the queen can go to g5, which is a very hard concept, I think, to, to pick up on immediately. So here, f4, super strong move. Now the queen is forever in a box. Um, if white gets another turn, he's probably going to play h4. So black decided, I'll play h4 myself. Now maybe sometimes I can move my queen. But white played one more move, and it's very similar to the first game, and then black gave it up. Um, so I, I guess you can pause at home. There's, there's people coming in, so we'll give it away. a4. And remarkably, black is in Zugzwang. There's absolutely nothing you can do here. Um, you can't move the queen because this is going to lead to a quick checkmate. Or, you know. Um, you can't move either of your rooks. If you make a move like this, you know, we just play, play here and, you know, not going to like that. Um, so you just, you just can't move either of your rooks anywhere because, okay, we play here. Uh, there's, you know, you can... 
You can try to give your pawns away, so this doesn't change anything if we take it. You can try giving this guy away, but, okay, opening up this diagonal is not going to be good for you. So this also would lead to a quick mate. Um, and so, yeah, so it's amazing. He's down two exchanges, but these bishops are actually fantastic pieces. None of black's pieces can move. They're all super constricted. Um, so really, really, you should be proud of this game. It was sort of a, the immortal YouTube submission. Um, so thank you for sending it in. It was, it was really pretty, especially I, I love the final position.